Hi, this is Michael Uslan. You're listening to Batman on Film. I'm vengeance. I have given a name to my pain. Social Hour, a Batman on Film podcast, Batman Dash on Dash Film dot com. This is episode number one forty seven. It is January fourth, twenty twenty four. Let's ride, Ryan Lauer. How are you, sir? Happy New Year. Thank you. I'm doing well. I'm sporting a hoodie of the Michigan Wolverines. It's a good game. I watched it, and then I watched my Texas Longhorns play Washington. Mm-hmm. Almost came back and won that son of a gun. What a crap final three plays or whatever they had. Yeah. Everything going their way, and they were set up for greatness there at the yeah. end. And then I was yeah. just really surprised. Those final, like, I don't remember, two or three plays. I'm like, yeah, man, guys, that was that was your play? <laughs> Washington's you know, opening the door for you. I was uh, watching. I was watching the the Michigan Alabama game. I really had no dog, you know, in the hunt. Sure, I was just watching it for the 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 football. Coach Ramey. Yes, I. And that last play that Alabama ran, like freaking quarterback yeah. draw. I'm like, that's what you got because this is on the last play. That's all you. That's what you dialed up, man. You know. So Rich Eisen. Uh, any sports yeah. fan, they know who Rich Eisen is. Uh, I grew up with Rich Eisen on ESPN. Yeah. Uh, former University of Michigan guy. And he he summed it up. He did like a reaction online after the game. And it's similar to mine of that final play happened. And he was a little just like taken aback. For some reason, it just seemed like, wait, that was their last play? Wait, there's... There's no flag. Wait, that's the end of the game. Michigan won. Like that was exactly how my reaction was from it because I was just surprised at that last play. Yeah, you know, I was too. The, the, co- the I coach was like, in me was like, "Huh? That's, that's what you dialed up on fourth down." I did not like Michigan's odds on that last play. It's like fourth and goal from the three, and if you see it, the left side had a little bit of a gap. It's just the snap was a little off, and then he maybe he just panicked and he just went right to the crowd, in which that was not a good call, a good decision the whole game for Michigan's line. So I don't know, but yeah, um, good on Michigan. And I gotta say, Bill, um, I wish he was here with us to talk to us right now, but I'm really surprised at the actions of the sports fan uh, Peter Arvera because. <laughs> He's a lifelong Alabama fan and he's he's known to just like fill his pockets during uh, tailgating at Alabama home games. Yeah. All the meets. He makes makes, even not. He's so dedicated. He goes to Alabama, goes to Tuscaloosa, Alabama, clear from New Jersey. He pours nacho cheese in his pockets too. Like he does it all. Um, (laughs) Yeah. He's, he's got a roll tide tattoo on his lower back. I saw a picture of Nick Saban on his on his chest. This guy's a lifelong fan, and he just yeah. flat out dumped Alabama right really? after that game. Yeah. So I mean, I'm What's just gonna, I thought I thought What's he was he I with? thought he was a loyal sports fan, but he's a fair Nick, weather fan apparently. Yeah, I knew the Nick Saban tattoo was relatively new, but you know he had yeah he's got that Bear Bryant one also. Oh yeah. Oh gosh, where is that one at? I, I think it's on his like it on his. Uh, uh, on the no, shoulder. no, 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 no. It's on the back. It was on his calf. Oh, that's right. The calf. That's why he's yeah. always wearing shorts. He's always yeah. showing that off. And uh, I mean, I guess if he's jumped ship, I, he's going to have to go through a lot of uh, tattoo removal, huh? I guess so. I don't know how you come back from that. I was just really surprised. He's a lo- he's a sports guy. I thought he was loyal. Um, and apparently he's just a Fairweather fan. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm shocked. 
Shocked, yeah. I tell you. But hmm. whatever. Shocked, that's shocked, I tell you. <laughs> shocked. Peter Arvera. Ugh. But anyways, yeah. Anyway, um, well, uh, ex- exciting, uh, exciting New Year's Day. That was yeah, the excitement I, for that day. Those were, you know what? Television and the NCAA couldn't have asked for two better uh, semifinal games. You know? Absolutely. And like in different ways, I think. So that Michigan Alabama one, they each had mistakes, but it was a pretty, it was about what, 80% of the time? It was a pretty solid back and forth, I think. Yeah. Of yeah. like heavyweights clashing, whereas yeah. your Texas Washington game was a pretty exciting offensive battle. Yeah. So because um, I then, thought it, yeah, I thought that game was was done. You know. So did I. And then, yep. They started pulling away. Yeah, and Texas came back and had a chance to win it. And you know what they did? They were down know, by ten. They huddled up and they said, "Guys, let's ride." They did. And then, and then there yeah, they are. They, yeah, they didn't this, ride. This, they didn't ride far Bill. enough. They didn't ride far <laughs> enough. <laughs> then I had, you know, that that, and then that was on Monday, correct? Yes, that was on Monday. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I had my days, and my days are all mixed up because I was in Minnesota for a week, basically. Um, Saturday night, my Cowboys played the Lions. What happened to see that? Why don't you go ahead and give some. I mean, these people knew what they were coming into. This is the first time you've recorded in a while. This is right yeah. after an exciting weekend of football that involved yeah. your Texas teams. They know what they're getting into. But what's your thoughts on that? Uh, two minutes. The, the okay. Here's the bottom line. The the Lions got tried to get cute. They yeah. Tried to get cute with shenanigans. Legal shenanigans. But it wasn't in the spirit of what, what, of, of, the, you know, when you do, when you have a, uh, a lineman number who reports eligible, right? Yeah. He's got to be very, he's got to make it clear to the referee, I am eligible. Okay, I'm number whatever, 57 or whatever. And they trotted out two or three linemen type guys to the referee and we're trying to you know screw up screw with dallas's defense but and then they you you know i don't know if it i can't think they did it on tv i but i know in the stadium when that happens when they're you know a guy comes in I, i'm eligible I, I he's got supposed to be you know he's supposed to say i'm eligible here's my you know my number okay. um of course they tried these shenanigans with one guy doing it who wasn't you know it was just shenanigans Okay. And so referee got it confused. But the thing is, you re, he, you say it on the loudspeaker. You, if you're at the game, you hear it. Number 60, you know, number 77 is reporting eligible. Number 77 is reporting eligible. You know, every, every you know, 90,000 people at AT&T Stadium could hear that. And then the, the referee goes to the defense and says, 77 is eligible. So that's that's the rule. So they know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the Cowboys. Tonight you're going to break your one rule. Yeah. So the <laughs> Cowboys <laughs> didn't cover 68, who was that was not the one that, that was reported as eligible. So it was deemed, you know, uh, legal man, legal touch. So the bottom line is the lines got a little too cute for their britches. Mm. And end up costing them. Then they had two chances to. They could have tied the game and went to overtime. So this well, is it, yeah. this is what I was thinking and watching all that unfold. Yeah, did not surprise me as they were getting close to scoring a touchdown. And I'm like, okay, do they go for two? Dan Campbell, he likes to you know shoot from the hip. Um, yeah. Do they go for Texan. two and go for the win? That's right. Or does or do they go for the the tie? Yeah, and like it wouldn't surprise me for a two point because what does Detroit in a sense? What do they have to lose? Already locked up their division. They're going to have yeah. a home playoff game. Dallas, at that point, Dallas, San Francisco, and Philly all have basically better records than them. So, where what does Detroit have to gain? Let's risk it. Let's just go for it. But when yeah. it was like penalty, penalty, flag, it's like the universe is trying to tell you something. Yeah. Kick the damn extra point, go to overtime. Yeah. So, I was surprised they still went with it. Yeah. Yeah. And three times. 
Yep, exactly. You know, the second time I got intercepted and Michael Parsons flinched and they gave him, you know, so they had a mm -hmm. third time and the Cowboys broke it up. So that was it. Um, I thought it was over. So I had an My episode. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then I saw the flag. Then I saw the flag. Wait, what's a what's a Bill Jet Ramey episode? I it, it would take an entire podcast to yeah to, okay to, yeah. Um, I don't take losses very well. Listen, us BOF to, guys yeah. know the day after uh, Dallas Cowboys lose a football yeah. game, yeah. Don't Bill's pretty me. quiet. Yeah, Bill don't doesn't text. text. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty mute. So we're like, okay, yeah. we're and on so, you. Then you know, then we had to sweat out the two plays. And uh, uh, one, we won. So then I, I danced a jig of course. in Minnesota. So, yes. That video, um, that video podcast is coming soon where you're yes, going to show that jig. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, and then the next day, I'm just watching NFL, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, oh, boy. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I have been, I have been um, pretty much, uh, Figured it was damn near set in stone that the Cowboys were going to not win the NFC East and they'd be the five seed. And lo and behold, the Arizona Cardinals go to Philadelphia. Go They're to big Lincoln. BOF fans at Arizona. Arizona. I don't know if you knew that. Oh, yeah. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, and uh, and they, the Arizona Cardinals beat Philadelphia Eagles which knocks them, knocks the Eagles out of the first place in the NFC East, moves Dallas into first place, as well as the second seed in the NF NFC playoffs. And so all Cowboys have to do is beat Washington Commanders this coming Sunday, and they will win, they will win the division and the number two spot. So, uh, look, I've Cowboys lost to Arizona. On any the 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 uh, talent between one team and the next is so close, even between the best team and, and the worst team in the NFL. That mm -hmm. really, really, I know it's cliche on any given Sunday. So Cowboys need to take care of their business and beat the Commanders. That's right. And uh, I'll be going to a playoff game next week. Woo! At 18th Stadium. So yeah, and uh, went did. Well, I, I'm saying hey, if you don't like this witty banter, I'm sorry. We'll get to the we'll get to the main show here in a second. It's so. your show. If they don't like yes. it, then don't don't listen. Damn it, you promised witty banter and you're getting it. <laughs> yeah, just just fast forward there. Uh, traveled up to Minnesota first time probably in five years. First winter I've been up there, Ugh. and they've had I don't know if y'all been having an Indian. If y'all had a unseasonably warm and dry winter. Yep, because Minnesota has. I drove in a snowstorm uh, the evening of Halloween, and since then it's been pretty, pretty warm, which is pretty surprising. Yeah, so we mid, had up mid fifties on yeah. Christmas Day, mid fifties around Christmas here. Okay, so we get up there. We well, we drive drive from Dallas, DFW. We go up to Kansas City area, stay in Liberty. That's about an eight. It's about about midway. It's like it's like it's like sixteen and a half hours, probably seventeen with stops and everything. So it's about eight hours ish to Liberty from here, and then another eight hours ish from Liberty to. Uh, we went to we stayed in Pequot Lakes. Shout out to Pequot Lakes, Minnesota, which is right next to Breezy Point, Minnesota, where that's where I have my we have our little acre of property. One day I'll have a cabin there. And so, uh, yeah, we went up there and it was, um, it was, I mean, it was in the thirties during the drive up there last week and then got up there. I mean, there was like no snow. It was, was just weird to see the lakes were not frozen and they, wow. and they were frozen. They were frozen, but they were not like, you don't walk on what you're going, you're going down, you know, you're going through. And yeah. And so, um. I mean, there were ice, but they were just, you don't, I saw some eye, uh, fish houses on summer. Like you're just taking your, you're taking a big chance just, there, you know? I just you got know? an image of dark night rises walking on the yeah. ice. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, so um, it's all connected that, to Batman. You it know? is. Who, who was that character that 
went through the ice there. Uh, oh my gosh, what? I'm I'm forgetting his name. Uh, forgetting his name. It's uh, Daggett's. Partner, yeah, Daggett's. Basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, he doesn't even get a name. Daggett's yeah. partner. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we get there, and then the next next two days, it snowed. Hey, so look at that. Some, so I got some snow, and it stayed below freezing. It was in the 20s. Uh, didn't get out of the 20s, even when we left. And I think they're like, I know up there tomorrow and through the weekend, they're getting more snow. And then I look at the weather, and it's like, here comes some negatives. And here comes some, you know, single digit highs. So we got just enough winter. <laughs> you took for, your Texas to, heat up to, there to, to appease, you know, just enough of that Minnesota winter to appease me with all snow and, you know, whatnot. And it makes it look all nice. And so just sh- shout out to three little cool bars. We went to their Lucky's and Pequot Lake, Lucky's Pub, I think. So if you're, if you're up in that area, stop by. This is, you know, not, this is a non-paid endorsement. I'm just saying I like the place. Yeah. Sports bar, you know, typical Midwest, Minnesota, cool bar. And then we went so with the commander. I've been going to the commander for you know, 20 years. And then the JJ's pub, which I right, like that. Those both two are in Greasy Point. So anyway, we're going to get to some Batman now. We're going to. All right. Cause last it's, it's question. Awesome. Okay. Last All one. Right. Were you up at midnight to see to ring in 2024? Always am. All right. Uh, I'm always I'm always up at that point. Um putting the kibosh on the previous, looking into the new, and then carry on my day. Haven't done anything wild for many years. It's better than putting the kasab on it. Yeah, I don't I'm a kasab free man. I yes. don't have time for that nonsense. You got you got to yeah, you got <laughs> you don't you gotta stay clear of that kasab. Stay, <laughs> yeah gotta stay clear it's infectious of that all right infectious. all right all right i was asleep i was asleep <laughs> okay. all right not all surprised right. uh yes um so variety had an article owen gleberman i know him knew him from entertainment weekly is he still right for them also you know i'm not i don't remember i'm not sure I know the name. The, I know yeah, that's one of the names. You know, he's one of those names of reviews for movies you pay attention yeah, to. Yeah, he's a film critic. Uh, like I said, I've known him for uh, from being from Entertainment Weekly. Anyway, he wrote an article that kind of echoes some things that I, I have thought and have said on Batman on film uh, and just, you know, conversation and whatnot on the, in the Facebook group. Uh, but the title is... Why the fall of comic book movie culture is inevitable. And the subtitle is it's not just bad sequels, it's far simpler. Uh simpler. It's fan- the, the fantasy heroes have been strip mined. And I read the article and I damn near agreed with any everything that he wrote, which I'll get to some points here in just a second. What did you think? of that article well, i just, just in general it. okay right before well, we recorded i almost thought well. you were i almost thought you were trapping me to get me on here to talk dc universe but you know i've been like i'm here to talk batman otherwise nobody wants to hear my opinions on anything else yeah. but there's a lot more with this because it's talking about the entire genre in itself and yes. i think i have i think i hope i have some um opinions that people find um maybe semi-valuable Yes. Uh, I'm by far no expert or anything like that. There's his, the article was written almost leaned uh, pessimistic, maybe a little cynical, but that's his, he's coming at this with a point, a point of view. And it is like almost, you know, leaning towards negative on the comic book genre itself. But then he states his facts and why he feels that way. And so therefore, I think like his approach and his evidence, I think, in his opinion, um, I don't know, it's it's valid. Yeah. You know? He's I, not just crying things like it sucks, it's stupid. It's like it's he's got a point of view and then he has 
some examples to help support that point of view. Whether you I, agree or disagree, they're there. I'd never thought it came off. This is me. I did not think it came off as one of those, you know, uh, snotty critics who look down their nose at the comic book movie genre. I didn't either. Just, and, and was, re- you know, was just saying, you know, it, it, it's it's shit. It sucks. And it's just, you know, it, it's always sucked. And this is, you know, it's ran its course and none of that. It, it wasn't no. like that. It was almost like, and there's also a tone of with some points he made is that that he wants he enjoys these films and wants them to be good. Mm-hmm. He wants them to be good, not mediocre. And that was the, the main thing. It's he said mediocre material is has uh, damaged comic book movies. And I will say this: um, I do not. I I don't think. I don't buy into like the comic book movies have gone the way of the Western. I've never, you know, I, I think comic book movies are here to stay. Superhero movies are here to stay. I do not think I, I however, I, I think the days of what would you say? You know, what was the heyday The you know, when the, when the dark Knight trilogy was rolling and then the, and, you know, the years right after that, when the MCU was really, you know, going, you know, with the end game and all that, you know, with the uh, Avengers. Uh, I, th- I think you, you had the Dark Knight that was so that summer was a massive shot of adrenaline to superheroes because two months before that Iron Man came out that, yeah, you know, that got a lot of people's attention and excitement. And then you had the Dark Knight. So you had a really good one two punch. And even the the, you know, the next four years, I wouldn't say that it was uh like way up there yet because you still had some flops i mean you remember that good old jonah hex movie yeah uh yeah. green lantern neither of those i mean jonah hex far did far worse than green lantern did but green lantern wasn't great the thor and captain america movies did modestly well yeah but then you had the summer of 2012 in which it was the Avengers movie that blew the gates open and then dark Knight rises that sustained, I think that momentum. And then mm-hmm. it just felt it's the Marvel show yeah. all the way up through Endgame. So yeah. I, I mean, pending on where you, I don't know, like what you're asking to pinpoint. Um, I think you could say the, you know, the 2010s was, it, you could say superheroes, but I feel definitely it's like, it's, is the Marvel the Marvel show kind of, I know. don't, I don't see it going back to that being that impactful, impactful and yeah. that much of a cultural phenomenon. Again, um, there could, you know, you know, not, not an entire universe or genre, you know, I know DC yeah. was fault, you know, the Warner brothers, DC stuff was faltering at that time to, you know, there was some, there was some, I mean, you had Wonder Woman, you had Aquaman mm-hmm. um, that did well, but, you know, overall it was just DC, you know, that, that part of DC on film was floundering and it was, you know, look, they're, they're we're re, you know, getting a, a new DC universe on film and I'll get to that in a second. But I mean, I agree. I think, and, and to stay with the MCU stuff, Disney's MCU and even the top dog at, at Disney, Iger. Um, that's that's I'm correct in that, right? Is it Bob Iger's charge mm-hmm. at Disney? Um, even said that they part of the problem with the you know, because Marvel, I keep saying Marvel, Disney slash the MCU, Marvel films, Marvel Studios, they 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 are they have a they're in a conundrum. They have a they have a issue right now. Um they're, the movies haven't been doing well. Where is it going now? What are you going to do when you had this big freaking finale with Endgame? And it seems like everything that came after that has been... I mean, I haven't watched anything, to be honest. And I'm a comic book movie fan. I haven't seen... Other than No Way Home, Spider-Man movie. I haven't watched anything MCU. Hey, y'all. It's Bill Ramey, founder of Batman on Film. Let's take a quick pause in this podcast for these words from our sponsor. I uh, watched uh, Guardians 3 this year, which did really well. Yeah, uh, that one. And I think yes. critically. 
Yeah, that's um, an exception. Really, yeah, and I really liked that one. And that's not me saying that to be like, no, Bill, you're wrong. It's no, what I can think of a post end game. And this is where I fully on full on admit to you all the time of like, I'm not, I'm no expert. I haven't seen everything Marvel up through end game. I'd seen everything except Captain Marvel. Mm -hmm. Um, And since then I saw no way home and guardians and the doctor strange movie. And I think that's it. Marvel wise. And just because, and I mean, I, there's a big point to what I think this article even says of like, I just see stuff and I'm like, man, if it just yeah. does, nothing, nothing strikes me. If, and, if and, the movie and, looks good, I, I, I want to see it. Let's um, be clear. I mean, w- w- this is, we are two fans of the genre talking here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not general. I'm not general audience when it comes to this stuff. Mm-mm. I'm not. And if you've got, Folks like us who are, huh, you know, yeah, on this. What what about the general audience? And I think it shows with, I mean, Aquaman two, The Flash. Um, I mean, that's talking about DC. The, the Mar, yeah, we have the those Mar- two. You the, have Marvels. the Marvels, uh, Shazam earlier this year. Shazam, I feel like Black there's Adam. another. Oh, Ant Man and the Wasp at the beginning Ant-Man of the year. Ant Man and the Wasp, yes. I think it had a decent opening and then it nosedived. Yeah. Um, so therefore it's not much like, again, like he says in the article, it's not one studio against the other. It's kind of almost like the genre as a whole. Yes. Um, in which I saw, I wish I could remember who'd said it. That I saw on Twitter. It was kind of a long time ago, but they'd said something about, um, I'm glad like the superhero genre is where it is right now, but back in the day, I had to go to every single one to help support the genre. And now I'm, you know, pick and choose. And I'm like, that was actually, yeah, I can remember that was me. Like a a superhero movie is coming. I'm like, yeah, I need to see it because these don't come out that often, you know? And now it definitely feels like there's a, it's every, and I'm not trying to over exaggerate, but it just feels like it's everywhere if you need it. In which therefore it's like, well, eh. (laughs) <laughs> like eh, do i really need it right now though i'm good I'm gonna, without it <laughs> yeah I, i'm gonna get to my point uh go back to what i yeah, think yeah, yeah the mcu what it did negative for the genre in just a moment but but yeah i mean it's um they oversaturated it was just and I, well I might as well go to it now i think they just they they it's like you you know, you, you're, you got a farm and you're just farming the hell out of one piece of land. You never do the, you know, the rotation and you use up, you know, the soil to where it just can't grow anything on it anymore. It's almost that that's my analogy are you, you're drilling, you're drilling a well, an oil well, and you, you, you suck, you know, you suck that sucker dry. There's nothing left to drill. Or you're hungry for a bowl of cereal and you got six boxes of Lucky Charms. So you've eaten through two. You want another bowl of cereal. And you're like, I just had two boxes of Lucky Charms. I want a different, yeah. <laughs> I want a different kind of cereal. There, I think we've covered all the areas yeah. for give me, our examples. Give me, <laughs> give me Count Chocula. So, yeah, there you go. And I, it goes back to, you know, yes, the MCU, that. Uh, what, what I don't even want to the infinity saga is that what they go by? That that I think so, yeah. That? Okay, all right, huge, 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 huge success, masterfully done. Period. Yes, so uh, there's no criticism, nope. And when it comes to that, uh huh, to that, that how they had a plan and the plan worked and it was a huge success, but then it ended and the next part. Yeah, not so much. And I think that they the, the negative impact that it had was that it, every, every everyone expects when you see a comic book movie that has to go to some it, it has to lead to something else. And then there and there are post credit scenes and mid credit scenes and all of that stuff. Um, Which is reflective of the comic books. 
unfortunately. Yeah. And as I've gotten older, I don't know which one I can blame more for, but it's an annoyance now. Yeah. And has been for quite a while in comic books. The source material of these movies. Yeah. Of it's not the end because <laughs> here's this. It's like, well, yeah. For F's sake, man, give me a freaking end of a story. Yeah. <laughs> Close the book. It, it, it's like you, I've said, I've told this story before. I went to, I saw the Batman in a press screening and then I went to um, one of the very first, you know, uh, early screen, early fan screenings on that yeah. Wednesday before. And it was packed. And I had sat till the end of the credits in the Batman to make sure there were no, you know, no mm -hmm. MCU-ish tag scenes, right? Yeah. And there were not. There was that little, at the end, that little Riddler thing. But that's, that was nothing. It's, you know, nothing that they leads, you know, wait to the next. Now here's what's coming next, you know. And half the freaking audience sat there and waited till the end because they were all looking for and expecting this post credit scene that's going to show them what's coming next. And it, it, that I was like, you gotta be, you know, you're shitting me here. You know, this is mm -hmm. where we're at now that you can't watch a movie without a comic book movie thinking it's got to lead to something else. And I, and I think that's gotten tired. That's tired. Yeah. The whole thing is now tired. And it's hard to, in the, for example, Spider-Man and Batman. I, I've said many times, I think they're Teflon. Spider-Man and Batman on film are the two. And we've seen each have a series of films and have been rebooted. Okay, we're on what? The third solo reboot of Batman. You count the Burton Schumacher, uh, the Dark Knight trilogy, now the Batman saga. I exclude, I exclude the DCEU Affleck Snyderverse stuff, not because I didn't like it, it's because it's not solo Batman. Yeah. And 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 it still works. Um mm -hmm. Gleberman points out that he loved the Batman and it was a big hit, but it was not a cultural phenomenon like batman 89 or yeah. the dark knight and it's and and he points out it because it's gotten it's gotten it's not special it's not special do anymore do you agree with that yes i do yeah. too i do yeah i don't have i don't have blinders on as much no. as i loved the movie yeah i know that it wasn't universally beloved i know that it was not you know cultural defining moment in cinema or anything like that either but as you and i said i mean i don't know if it was in the the batman chapter by chapter as one of these mm -hmm. social hours the many that we've done talking about the batman i said that like i think the movie has set up to where it could reach that point though yeah yes and i still believe and that, that and that's because it's batman yep. it's teflon in my opinion uh, and based on, you know, just there, there is a little evidence to back that up that we've seen, mm -hmm. you know, and at least that's what I, I hope. I hope you're right, because I agree with you. I, think I do, too. That, that it's set up and it's because it's Batman and, it, and it's done really, really well, mm -hmm. really well. Spider-Man, another, another one of my Teflon comic book heroes, superheroes. Um, he mentions it. Uh, Mr. Lieberman mentions that he did not like No Way Home. Mm -hmm. I was not a huge fan of. The, I was not a huge fan. I'm a. I love Spider Man. Is like he could rotate between my sec number two or number three, depending on what's going on with you know with Superman. So um, you know Batman's way up here, and then the next two. So, but I'll, I'll go see Spider Man films, yeah. and I wasn't a big fan of the MCU Spider Man. Um, I wasn't for, either. For, for, for a lot of the reasons that I've mentioned before, is that you know it was too tied into Tony Stark and the Iron Man and the Avengers and all of that. You know, I just give me give me friendly neighborhood Spider Man. Okay, no, no way home. I saw opening day at a pretty early packed screening. Um, and surprisingly, I have not seen it since. 
and I remember liking it a I lot. Have not either. I keep I keep yeah. wondering is my hesitation to rewatch it because like I'm not gonna like it as like I don't know. I you know, there's a little hesitation to like maybe I'm I don't I just don't know if I'm gonna like it a lot less or you know, one of those moments. So I just keep putting it off, watching it over again. But um I know a big part of liking that movie was because of Toby Maguire and Andrew Garfield Spider Man. Nostalgia. I like I like both of them a lot more than I like Tom Holland's Spider-Man. Even though, and I got into arguments uh, with a friend before, who's a massive Spider-Man fan who was educating me that Tom Holland's the most comics accurate and blah, blah, blah. I don't give a shit. I just, I don't like his Spider-Man very much. <laughs> I'll, I like Tom Holland as Spider-Man. I didn't like mm-hmm. the, how they portrayed that Spider-Man in those Maybe films. that's, yeah, that's better put than how I... Um, and I do like, and I will over. say, I, I like Tobey Maguire the best, and I like Andrew Garfield. Like, mm-hmm. I was one, of, I was one of one of the few people is, who liked the uh, Amazing Spider-Man. You know, I recognize its its errors, but I like a lot of those movies. Yeah, like a lot in each of those Amazing Spider-Man movies. But anyways, they, yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say, like you you started to mention with Gleiberman of how he wasn't a fan of because he put that these yeah, points in the yeah. same paragraph of yes he he really liked batman but wasn't at cultural impact he did not like no way home but he recognizes the cultural impact of the character of spider yeah, th- and, and that I, yes I, yes i do think that there amongst nerds there have been discussions of like batman's more popular spider-man's more popular i'm a obviously diehard batman fan and i think spider-man wins that battle right now i think he does there's nothing mm-hmm. wrong with coming in second place, Batman. No. no. But I think Spider-Man, there's something with that character that's reaching different levels and reaching more um, reaching more people than maybe Batman is. And I, I don't know why. If people knew why, then they could, you know, they could change it. I don't know. But it's, um, um, I agree with this point, right? With and, 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 and also, you know, also glean from that is that his point about No Way Home is that it kind of goes further shows my take that Spider-Man is kind of in and Batman is kind of um, they are, they're not affected by all of this. Like the other characters are they're Uh, Teflon. (laughs) That's going to be one of the, that's going to be one of the Batman names, the Batman part three Teflon (laughs) heard it here first. Teflon. So, um, and he even says that, you know, the genre isn't like on life support, life support, or he, he thinks it's dying, but it's basically the, the, the heyday is done over with. The heyday is over with. And I would agree with that, though I think you can have some cultural events uh, from these, from, with a comic book superhero movie, I don't think the way that, and here we're going to get into a, 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 probably a topic. <laughs> I think it's the one you may not didn't want to talk about, but. All right. Uh, Got to go. See you, Bill. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Is that um, I think the way is not, is not the shared universe. Everything's connected. We're telling one big story, which is what Warner Brothers Discovery, Warner Brothers Pictures, um, seems hell bent on doing with this new DCU under James Gunn and Peter Safran. So, some a little bit of like a comparison because I was trying, I was thinking of this, um, yeah. last year, the year before, or something. I did a reread of The Long Halloween, and in the back of each issue were questions to Jeff Loeb, the writer of The Long Halloween, that he was answering. And in that, so these were questions in 1996, 1997, were questions about the you know, the comic book medium. And he had, you know, he had a pretty negative viewpoint on the industry at that, like then. And if it's even around in 10 years, if it's even around in five years, many times, and then here we are all 25, 26 years later, it's still around. Mm -hmm. And then uh, flip it to 1950s sci-fi movies where people can think of, there is a style to old sci-fi. Mm-hmm. Run like beaten into the ground in the fifties. Did they stop making sci-fi movies after that? Absolutely not. Mm-hmm. Something like 
Kubrick's 2001 comes mm-hmm. along in science fiction. Wow, something totally different. Um, horror movies, the way horror movies were in like 70s and then the 80s, early 90s to mid 90s, it was it was feeling like a dead genre. And then a movie like Scream comes along, which does something really different and is absolutely a horror movie, but does something different with the genre. Mm-hmm. It's I just don't feel like genres aren't dead. Bury it. Mm-hmm. It's you've gotten to the point of where you're just it feels like a phoning it in. You need to observe that you need to do something different mm-hmm. within that genre. And that will spark interest in it yet again. You look further in the superhero genre to with your point that I know you're working toward that you've made you've made basically of the genre right now is like kind of nose diving mm-hmm. not and that's over exaggerating it's just not doing great so what has it been doing that you're starting to pick up on the pattern of it's not doing great do something different then and it feels and i know i'm just a consumer at this point but it's like it feels why continue to do what has been happening because especially now your customers are the, are the, your paychecks. They aren't paying for it. They don't want it. Mm-hmm. So therefore, do something that sparks interest and sparks creativity and can build toward more people being interested of like, I'm not usually into this. Stuff. My my parents don't watch superhero crap. They just mm-hmm. don't. But when those Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies came out, they watched them. They liked them. When the Christopher Nolan batman movies came out like my mom went with me to the theater i would have i would have been a betting man saying she'll never see a superhero movie in a theater and she went with me and saw batman begins like to this day even at family get-togethers i have like an aunt and my mom talking about how great heath ledger's he was so amazing and joker it's like because you guys are doing something different that's you're just hitting a wider audience with something different Yeah, And I feel like that's just what it needs to do, especially like you said, we're both and I'm not again, not I I haven't read every Marvel comic. I don't really read Marvel comics that much and characters and stuff. And I'm not interested in your in your stuff. It's like, okay, well, then try to win over the people reading your comics. And like, I don't know. Now I'm just going off. So go ahead. No, it's just that's that's the point is that the way you get something different. Is by bringing in a Nolan Mm -hmm. or a Matt Reeves and let giving them creative freedom to do something different. Yeah. Um, The Batman was different than the, any Batman movie we saw before. Mm -hmm. I mean, the dark Knight trilogy speaks for itself Mm -hmm. in that regard. I think you're stifled. There's, you're not going to get a Nolan to do. A, a, I'm not speaking to like Chris specifically, but a Nolan, a level director, filmmaker, to do any of these films that are that are beholden to uh, concurrent storylines, overarching storylines, you know, shared universe. I, I, you just, you know, you're not, or even a Todd Phillips. I mean, that Joker is different. Mm-hmm. That's different. That's a that was a different. That was a game changing movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The, the sequel is a freaking musical. That's doing something different. I'm I'm the one of the guys who, I one of the people who love Joker, because of its, uh, the you know how ambiguous it was to what was real and what not, and I didn't think it needed a sequel. And then as soon as I, you know, it's going to be a musical and Lady Gaga's in, I was like, okay, I'm in. This is different. Yeah. We have both talked about, it, I think on here, even yeah. uh, about after the first one of like, oh, I don't want a sequel. A sequel is mm-hmm. going to make me decide and, or tell me what happened in the first one. Yeah. Where I'm still sort of undecided, but then yeah. it, it is. And then it's, yeah, sequels coming. It's going to be a musical. Lady Gaga's Harley Quinn. It's like, well, son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm there. Absolutely. It interest of just, huh? How am I? How they're going to do that? Um, I don't want to detract either 
um, old Vidam pockets, the, uh, the Alabama fan, Peter, he's loved all the DC stuff that's come out this year, mm-hmm. you know? So I, I'm not, um, what I want to say, I'm not ignoring or unaware of, for some people, they're getting what they want. Yeah. And, uh, good for you. <laughs> Bless your heart. Um, yeah. Th- that's, I feel such a small, it's a smaller audience to be able to sustain uh, the life of the the comic book genre Mm -hmm. for that to be, I don't know. I feel you need more, a bigger audience paying money to get that. Uh, We, us. Okay. You and I, Batman fans aren't, we'll go see any Batman movie and, but we would not keep that series, that film series going if it was just us Batman fans. Absolutely. Going to see it. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, and it's also like, you know, and I, I know I, I've, I've, I don't get the point. I want to see more DC, I, DC films. I, the Superman legacy, I was hyped when it came out. I, and I've said before again, and I'm trying to beat a dead horse here, but it's just, you got these non Superman characters in it and it they're in it. I don't, I don't, I don't care what James Gunn says that it's part of the story. Well, it's part of the story because you got a shared universe and you're trying to establish, we have a shared universe. We're going to see these characters again, you know, uh, just make a damn Superman film. Uh, how about just making a damn Superman film with Superman characters in it and not war and, and just let it be. It's, you know, we'll see what happens. And he makes the point, Lieberman, about, you know, he brings up Superman legacy and getting James Gunn. And it's like, you know, <laughs> F you yeah. Snyder, Snyder, whatever verse or yeah. something. Like yeah. That. Yeah. <laughs> if he really wanted some clicks, that should have been his headline. Yeah. <laughs> but he, he makes the point of, yeah, but it's going to feel like the, like the 12th time we've seen Superman on film, you know? And I, that's, I, 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 I get it interesting interesting point because i don't feel like these and i i with that line i'm sure it pisses some people off and some people would want to argue i'm not in the business of arguing over superheroes um but that resonated though a little bit Mm -hmm. i'm not the biggest you know i'm not a superman guru come to me and i'll inform you of everything but it's it's funny because i think the line actually kind of it's got truth to it it does feel like that for some reason or in, you know, maybe that's a little exaggerated, but it does feel like, Oh, another Superman. I when look, if you break it down. It's like, actually, it's not like there's a ton of yeah. Superman's, but it does feel for some reason. Like, oh yeah. Another Superman. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. I it, It's look fans. And I count myself into this, whether it's my sports fandom or my Batman fandom, Fans aren't rational for the most part. What? What are you yeah. talking about? <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, arguments I get like, you know, well, it worked when Superman and Batman from the animated series met and it was awesome. It was, you know, it was just how it was handled. That's made for fans, you know? Same yeah. thing with comic books. Comic books are read by comic book fans. Mm-hmm. and they're used to that kind of you know that sort of stuff and i just think it's a it, it's i i wish they were just i wish everything was let's just go back to this i you know i i prefer and when it comes to the comics i prefer the black label stuff black label like is Batman. yeah man pete and i we do wrap-ups um you post them on batman-on-film.com for the the Batman Book Club podcast, where we talk about new Batman comics that come out each month, we've been doing it almost three years, and time and again, a Batman Black Label book comes out, and we're like, "Yep, this is the winner. This mm-hmm. is the winner." The other stuff feels, yes, it's ongoing. It has its fans. I totally understand that. I do. They're just more unpredictable, better stories when they are these three book, four book series. Yeah, not left to sprinkle of like the end question mark it's like no the end period yeah i the and story's done. i wish that i wish dc on film 
you know, I know they had the black label banner or Elseworlds. I'm sorry, Elseworlds banner. Um, Which is just in theory. It's not like yeah. anything's happened with it. Yeah. With that Elseworlds banner, you know. No, I mean, we got Joker so, 2 coming out later this year. And then we got Batman Part 2 and the, the Penguin yeah. or whatever. We'll see if I, I'd be interested to see if they uh, when the Penguin does premiere this year at some point, if they'll have, you know, some DC Elseworlds. Yeah. Banner Some attached kind of to little, it, yep, but I, I agree. Here, my point, and I'm gonna we'll wrap it up here, is I want them all to be that, not not crazy takes, you know, on you know, let's do Superman Red Sun. Well, I'd like to see that, but that's a whole different story. But yeah, I, I just, just you know, get a get a filmmaker here, let him do his thing, and don't worry about it all connecting. I, I just just make a. That's how you get. That's how you're gonna get something different and fresh. Yeah, you you can deliver something different and fresh, and that's that's how you get investment. Is you know, um, this it's all connected. The mantra of Batman on film um, that has been so familiar and done for over a decade. So, why do you want to do what's been done? And it and it's the MCU I, is proving it it it's runs its course. You get stifled. It's like you, I know you've said it in, yeah before of like it limits creativity. I think it kind of does because like hey, this is what I want to do. Well, you can't because da 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 da. Um, and I'm not I'm not sitting here like all doom and gloom on what's coming. I haven't seen a frame. Of yeah. corn sweat, Superman. I have no idea if he looks so. Anybody that's already preaching about like, oh my gosh, he looks so he's gonna be so great. Nah, blah, blah blah blah, whatever. It's like, calm down. We haven't seen shit. You know, <clears throat> he could be spectacular. He could be fine. He could be awful. I don't know. Same thing with Superman Legacy. We have no idea mm -hmm. what that movie's gonna be until it's done and we see it for ourselves. I know because you and I have said it, and this is like the last time I said it even on a podcast was right when it was announced of those other characters. It's just it, it, I didn't mean like, I'm not interested. This is stupid. Mm -hmm. It's just, oh, these casting announcements of other characters. I don't care. Yeah. You know? And I think that's almost like that's the umbrella statement for like this article is sadly for me. It's like stuff is like, I don't care. I don't care. For someone who used to love a new announcement of things, mm -hmm. they're on the Thursday night showings or opening weekends way back in the day for movies. And I was looking forward to Aquaman. I haven't been able to go to a theater, so I have not seen it in the theater. Yeah. I will not yeah. see it in a theater. I have no time. And I'm like, I'm okay with, yeah, I'll see it whenever it's streaming. Which is so weird for me because I used to be one that was, oh, I want to go. I want to oh go. Oh, my God. Man. Don't Someone yeah. came... Someone came on the, the Facebook group and lectured lectured folks who were going to see Aquaman 2 because you got to support it all. No, you don't have to support it all. No, and, I'm not going to support it. Yeah, no, yeah, I, 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 I haven't seen it. I didn't go to the press screening. I try to avoid sounding like old man yells at clouds, and I'm really not, I hope yeah. I don't come off that way. It's just, it, it's a, a little bit of a bummer that it, it is. It's gotten to like, eh, I don't care. Yeah. Eh, you know, a lot of, eh, eh. And I would totally be that way. If announcements for the Batman part two comes out and if it's something that doesn't excite me, I'm not going to put on a false face and be like, sure. oh, I can't wait. It's going to sure. be the greatest thing ever. It's like, that doesn't excite me. However, we have a movie that's already been made as evidence of this is the world created. This is how Pattinson looks and acts in the suit. And it was something that I adored. So yeah. that's enough for me. Like, you know what? I don't know that I like this, but I'm going to wait and see. And then if I don't like it, I'll say that I don't like it. Um, I I want the genre to continue. I think it yeah. will. I want the genre to do well. But that I am, I am not bullish on. I think we need. I think less is more. Yes, absolutely. I I think, and I'll just you know recap here. I think 
the way I, I don't think the shared universe is the way to go. Don't and don't don't tell me about comic books have shared universes and the freaking you know the animated DC universe worked. That's not the, it's not it's but, not a movie. It's not Bill, a movie. Don't you, don't you know it? It's it's all connected. Well, I know that it's all connected. Okay, all right. <laughs> yeah, of course it is. <laughs> but <laughs> um, isn't that funny and, though? And, you just said less is more. It seems like that universally that concept. It seems like everybody's on the same page of like, yeah, yes, less is more, yeah. and yet somehow con- continues to be the cup runneth over. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know how that happens because it seems like we're on the same page, but then we're we're definitely not all on the same page. I mean, look, you had you. I won't bat. I got stumbling for words. And the reason why I, I do like these films, I want to see good ones, um, not just Batman, but I want the Batman film series to be viable. Yeah. And if and if and if the genre is not viable, it's going it, to you know it could affect Bat. I, even the Batman's Teflon and Spider Man's Teflon. I mean, at some point, you know, um. It, it still it it'll it'll affect it. Um, I, I I just I, I'm hoping I and I hope it's I hope I hope this stuff. I hope it, they find a, a a a way to make lesser films, better films, and keep you know. Let's get at least get it up. Let's get it. Let's improve it from where it is right at this moment. How about that? that makes sense yeah yeah yep it's good for if it's good for the genre then it will only be good for yeah batman and spider-man and and stuff too because if the genre like i don't know the 2017 justice like i thought batman outside of that opening scene he was a buffoon he was embarrassing to watch he escaped that image fortunately um but i don't want him in that I don't want the character in that position again. Sure. Because it doesn't do good for the character. It becomes a laughing yeah. stock. Batman and Robin's 26 years old, 27 years old this year. Mm-hmm. And it's still constantly referenced, mm-hmm. you know, and not positively. No. Uh, so it's like, no, I want, I want people to talk about Batman. Like they do with the dark Knight trilogy. Like they do with 89, you know, I want mm-hmm. him I want a positive light. For yeah. Him. And sure. Why not the whole genre itself? Yeah. Make some kick-ass movies that are different and unique and, make us want to rush to see them i think uh i just think that this new dcu is just about 15 years ish um late all right and we'll leave it at that (laughs) we'll leave it at that all right anything you want to you want to plug in this new year yes um i already referenced batman book club latest episode me and Boudin Pockets talking Batman comics of December that came out, um, including two Black Label series, Gargoyle of Gotham and City of Madness, which both got very positive reviews from me and Pete. Um, yeah, check that out. You posted that generously on Batman on Film, uh, available wherever you listen to podcasts. And then also I did a review for the latest Batman issue, number 141, I think. Um, that's also on Batman on Film. I'm tired. I'm, I'm, I'm getting tired. Read about of it. Batman fighting the robot. Woo-hoo. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I posted that. Uh, I texted you and said, man, you know, I've lost track of time. I'm going to get this up. I, I actually, it was Rachel's turn to drive, and I, I uh, got in the back of the SUV and I posted it somewhere. Time to go. Somewhere, in, I, somewhere in the road, on the road of I 35 in southern Iowa, somewhere around there. So, yeah, there, there you go. go. All right. All right, all I got is uh, let's go to Batman on Film, batman filmcom uh, and check out everything that everybody does there. And hopefully this year, um, well, we, not hopefully, we should be getting, should start picking up, you know. Uh, I got the Penguin coming, and the Batman Part 2 will be filming uh, sometime here, in the next, sometime in this, this first half of the, a year, I suspect, and we'll get some casting news, and We'll be uh, right in our wheelhouse here at Bad. All right, now so Rachel will finish up here. We'll catch you next time. You have been listening to the BOF Social Hour, Jet's official podcast on Batman on Film. 
Follow BOF on threads at The Batman on Film. Follow BOF on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Batman on Film. To help keep BOF up and running, go to patreon.com slash Batman on Film. Or you can buy BOF a beer at buymeacoffee.com slash the real Batman on Film. For Jet and everyone at BOF, I'm announcer Rachel. Authoritative, definitive, the original Batman on Film, founded in 1998.